Hey everyone, in today's video, I'll take you through my journey of passing the Certified Kubernetes Administrator exam. I passed the CKA certification with a score of 93% and having successfully scaled through this test, I decided to share my learnings with you. We'll dive into the specific resources I used, the strategies that worked for me, and the detailed tips that will help you succeed. This isn't just another certification guide, but it's a comprehensive step-by-step -step walkthrough to help you leave no stones unturned and ultimately ace the CKA exam. Stick around to the end as I share gems all the way. And without further delay, let's get to it. The Certified Kubernetes Administrator exam is a hands-on test designed to validate your skills in managing, operating, and troubleshooting Kubernetes clusters. It is essential for anyone aiming to work in cloud architecture, DevOps, site reliability engineering, or any IT field involving Kubernetes. The exam covers five key domains, each with a specific weight in the overall score. First, we have the storage domain, which contributes 10% to the exam, where you have to configure persistent storage for your applications. You should understand how to create and manage persistent volumes and persistent volume claims, use storage classes, and configure dynamic provisioning of storage resources. Next is troubleshooting, which is the largest section weighing in at 30%. This part assesses your ability to diagnose and fix issues within clusters. You need to be very familiar with using kubectl commands to inspect and debug applications, to understand the common failure points in Kubernetes components, and know how to gather logs and metrics for analysis. Workload and scheduling is the third domain, which makes up 15% of the exam. Here, You'll be managing applications running on the cluster. You should know how to deploy applications using deployments, stateful sets, and daemon sets, and how to manage port scheduling using taints, tolerations, and node selectors. You also need to understand how to use jobs and cron jobs for running batch processes. Cluster architecture, installation, and configuration comes next, weighing 25% of the exam. This section tests your ability to design and set up Kubernetes clusters effectively. You need to be familiar with tools like KubeADM for bootstrapping clusters. You need to understand the role of the control plane components, such as the etcd, the API server, controller manager, and scheduler. You also need to know how to secure clusters using certificates, and hour back. Finally, the services and networking domain constitutes 20% of the exam. This involves setting up networking and services within the cluster. You need to be proficient with services like cluster IP, node ports, and load balancer. And you also need to understand the role of ingress controllers for routing external traffic to services. Knowledge of network policies for controlling port-to-port -port communication is also essential. In the exam, you'll face 15 to 20 performance-based tasks that need to be completed within two hours. When I took this certification, I was faced with 17 questions and a colleague of mine was faced with 16. So it really varies, but it's typically within that range. The exam is entirely hands-on with no multiple choice questions and you need to score at least 66% to pass. The CKA exam is an online proctored test, meaning you take it from your own computer while being monitored by a proctor. You need to install the PSI Bridge, which is a secure browser for this purpose. And the proctor will guide you through the setup process to ensure everything is secure and fair. By the way, a proctor is a person who monitors the exam remotely to ensure its integrity and fairness. The proctor will verify your identity, will ensure that the testing environment is secure, and observes you via a webcam and screen sharing to prevent cheating. So make sure your workspace is quiet and free of any distractions as interruptions could affect your performance. The CKA exam costs $395 US dollars, and this fee includes one retail. So if you do not pass on your first attempt, you have another chance without paying extra. The exam environment usually includes about six clusters, each with its own set of nodes. You need to switch context between these clusters during the exam. So it's crucial to be very comfortable with context switching. 
You can switch context using commands like kubectl config use context and then the context name. And it's very important to verify your current context before performing any operations to avoid mistakes. The clusters use the latest Kubernetes version and you have access to the official Kubernetes documentation during the exam, which is a huge advantage. You can open the documentation in a separate browser tab and use it to look up commands and configuration examples. This open book nature of the exam allows you to focus on understanding concepts and problem solving skills rather than memorizing commands. Preparing for the CKA exam requires a combination of the right resources and effective strategies. So let's discuss what I used. First, the official Kubernetes documentation is an invaluable resource. As I just mentioned, the CKA exam allows you to access the documentation during the tests. So it's essential to familiarize yourself with it, especially the sections on common tasks and commands. Knowing how to quickly find information in the documentation is very crucial. So practice navigating through the documentation to locate sections on deployments, on services, you know, on persistent storage and networking. Bookmarking the sections mentally can save you time during the exam. Next, I took CodeCloud's Certified Kubernetes Administrator course. This course is very excellent because it includes hands-on exercises that simulate real-world scenarios. It covers all core areas such as workloads, services, architecture, and troubleshooting. The hands-on nature of this course helps to solidify your understanding and prepares you for the practical nature of the exam. CodeCloud also offers mock exams that mimic the actual test environment, which is incredibly beneficial for building confidence and familiarity. One of the best resources I used was the Killer.sh CKA practice tests. When you register for the CKA exam, you get access to two practice sessions on Killer.sh. These sections closely mirror the actual exam environment and in my opinion are more difficult. The practice tests include multiple live clusters and the same Linux kernel and UI as the real exam. My first session on killer.sh was a wake up call as called just 25. This pushed me to focus intensely on specific scenarios highlighted in the practice exams. By my second attempt, my score improved significantly, making me feel confident for the real exam. The practice scenarios on killer.sh cover a wide range of tasks, storing applications and managing storage to configuring network policies and troubleshooting issues, giving you a comprehensive preparation experience. Additionally, the Kubernetes Cheat Sheet is an essential tool for anyone preparing for the Certified Kubernetes Administrator exam. It serves as a quick reference for common kubectl commands and their syntax, aiding in the efficient management and troubleshooting of Kubernetes clusters. During the exam where time is of the essence, the Cheat Sheet provides clear examples and command structures that could be quickly consulted. By becoming familiar with the cheat sheets, you can streamline your workflow, minimize mistakes, and effectively tackle the hands-on tasks required to pass the exam. Next thing you want to pay attention to is kubectl. Kubectl is crucial in the CKA exam because it is the primary command line tool used to interact with Kubernetes clusters. Mastery of kubectl commands is essential as the exam focuses on hands-on practical tasks that require you to manage, configure, and troubleshoot clusters efficiently. You will use kubectl to perform a wide range of operations such as deploying applications, inspecting cluster resources, managing nodes, and debugging issues. Familiarity with kubectl not only helps in executing tasks swiftly, but also ensures accuracy under exam time constraints, making it a vital skill for passing the CKA exam. Taking detailed notes during my studies helped me immensely. Before the exam, I reviewed my notes to refresh my memory on key concepts and commands. This practice ensured I could quickly recall important information and apply it effectively during the exam, I organized my notes by topic, including sections on deployments, services, storage, networking, and troubleshooting with key commands and examples for each of these sections. This made it easier for me to review and find information quickly. 
Next, let's talk about some key strategies and tips that help me succeed. First and foremost, practice is essential. The CK exam is hands-on, so the best way to prepare is by practicing as much as possible. Use tools like Minikube or Kubernetes clusters on cloud providers to get hands-on experience. Practical experience is super important and would help you become comfortable with the commands and tasks you need to perform during the exam. So set up your own cluster using KubeADM, you know, practice deploying applications, managing storage, and configuring networking. Use imperative commands instead of writing out YAML files as it can save you a lot of time during the exam. For example, use kubectl create to quickly create resources for example kubectl create deployment with the name my deploy and the image engine next and two replicas this command creates a deployment with a specified image and replica count quickly mastering these commands can significantly speed up your workflow during the test so familiarize yourself with other imperative commands for creating services pods and config maps as they can save valuable time. Time management is another critical aspect. With only two hours to complete the exam, managing your time effectively is crucial. So start with the questions you find easiest to build your confidence and ensure you secure those points. Flag more difficult questions and come back to them later. During my exam, I tackled the first 15 tasks within the first hour and left the lengthier ones for the last hour. This strategy helped me allocate time effectively and avoid getting stuck on challenging tasks earlier on. Use a timer or keep an eye on the clock to ensure you're making steady progress and don't spend too much time on any single task. And make sure to always double check your solutions. If you create a deployment, use kubectl or get deployments to make sure it is running correctly. This helps to avoid losing points due to simple mistakes. Verification can be a lifesaver and prevent you from missing out on points for tasks you think you've completed correctly. For example, if a task requires you to create a service, verify it's correctly set up by running kubectl get service and checking its status. Ensuring your solutions work as expected will boost your confidence and accuracy. Copy names and commands directly from the exam questions to avoid typos. This can save you from making small but costly mistakes. For instance, if the task asks you to create a pod named pod xyz123, copy this name directly from the exam prompt to avoid errors. Typos can lead to failed tasks, so using the copy-paste method ensures accuracy and saves time. Familiarizing yourself with the exam environment is also essential as the remote desktop environment can be different from what you're used to. As I mentioned earlier, and I will emphasize, practice using the killer.sh sessions to get comfortable. This was especially important to me as I had to adapt to the Windows-based shortcuts instead of my usual Mac shortcuts. Understanding the exam interface, knowing how to switch between clusters, and being comfortable with the provided tools will make the exam day less stressful and more manageable. Here are some topics you should focus on while preparing for the CKA exam. First, understand how to create and restore backups for etcd. This is a common task in the exam and knowing commands like etcd snapshot save snapshot.db for creating a backup is crucial. Also, learn how to restore etcd from a backup using etcdctl snapshot restore. Familiarize yourself with the etcd documentation and practice these tasks in your test environment. Next, learn the steps to upgrade a Kubernetes cluster using kubeadm. You will need to follow specific instructions to upgrade the control plane nodes and worker nodes. For instance, you might use kubeadm upgrade plan to see the available upgrades and kubeadm upgrade apply to perform the actual upgrade. Practice upgrading a test cluster to understand the process and troubleshoot any issues that arise. Ensure you know how to upgrade kubelet and kubectl on the worker nodes as well. You also want to know how to create and manage persistent volumes 
and persistent volume claims. You might need to create a persistent volume with specific storage requirements and then a persistent volume claim to use it. Understanding the relationship between persistent volumes and persistent volume claims is highly crucial. Practice creating different types of persistent volumes such as host path, NFS, and cloud provider storage and see how persistent volume claims bind to them. Also, make sure you understand how to use storage classes for dynamic provisioning. Another really important area you want to cover is to practice creating and applying network policies to control traffic between pods. You might need to create a policy that allows traffic from specific namespaces or pods. Understand the basics of Kubernetes networking and how network policies work. Use kubectl apply to create network policies and kubectl describe network policy to inspect them. Practice scenarios where you restrict traffic to certain pods or allow only specific types of traffic. You also want to understand how to configure ingress resources to manage external access to your services. For example, you might need to create an ingress resource that routes traffic to different services based on the URL path. Learn how to set up an ingress controller such as Nginx ingress and configure ingress rules. Practice creating ingress resources that handle multiple backend services and use host-based or path-based routing. You also want to be really comfortable with JSON path to extract specific fields from Kubernetes resources. This helps in quickly finding specific information from resource outputs. For example, kubectl get pods iPhone O, JSON path equals the item wildcard metadata.name as displayed on your screen, lists all pod names in a namespace. Practice using JSON path expressions to retrieve information from complex resource outputs and format them as needed. Another really crucial tip is to learn how to monitor resource usage and retrieve logs from pods. Use commands like kubectl top pods to get resource usage metrics and kubectl logs and the pod name to view pod logs. Monitoring tools like kubectl top requires the metric server to be installed in your cluster, so ensure you know how to set it up. Practice using kubectl logs to troubleshoot issues and understand the different logging options available in Kubernetes. To pass the CKA exam, your troubleshooting skills have to be on point. You have to be familiar with diagnosing and fixing issues like port failures, network problems, and misconfigurations. This could involve using commands like kubectl describe and kubectl logs to diagnose issues. Learn to identify and resolve issues with port scheduling, container runtime errors, and network connectivity problems. Practice troubleshooting scenarios where you need to debug and fix cluster components such as the API server or kubelet. The CKA exam is challenging, but with the right preparation, you can definitely pass it. Focus on hands-on practice, make use of available resources, and manage your time effectively during the exam. Remember, the goal is not just to pass the exam, but to gain a deep understanding of Kubernetes that will serve you well in your career. I wish you good luck with your preparation. If you have any questions or need further guidance, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.